G'day watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel based right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have what looks like a gas tank and one of the most memorable packagings uh, I have ever seen, I must say. And yes, it is a Citizen Promaster and the, you know, the sub uh, marking here is the Aqualand series. This has come from James, colleague from work who has actually very kindly lent me a few watches over the years and how cool is this packaging. Just very very memorable when I you know, looked at it and you open it like this and there we have this monster of a piece in here. So let's just put the packaging aside and show you, oh open that up to show you the watch in closer detail. And this is quite a monster. Guys, this is the Citizen Pro Master Aqualand Divers 200 meter depth meter. That's just all they call it because it's got a depth meter in here. Uh, the model number down the bottom here is the BN2029-01E. Okay, so you know, on, officially on the Citizen USA website, 975 USD, but typically expect this to go on sale. Currently, I think I'm seeing listings at around 700. Uh, I'll put links to products below as I find them. Right, okay, let's go into the details here. So the, the movement or the module, I should say, first up is the EcoDrive J250. Uh, it's got an, a power reserve that is rated at around 11 months uh, on full charge. It's got a date there. You can see at, you know, in, in this monster case, it's a relatively small date window there at the three o'clock position. Easy to lose it in all the details there. It's got a power reserve indicator. You can see there at the nine o'clock position. Uh, and of course, it's got that depth meter indicated by those blue hands or the blue hand there. Uh, it's got the depth memory maximum depth uh, and it's got a rapid ascent alarm. Okay, so let's just show you a couple of those features here, uh, before we move on. Uh, so it's got these screw down pushes here. I'm just gonna open that up. And then as I push this, you can see that that black uh, little hand, that syringe hand there goes to the maximum depth that has been achieved by the watch. That's the depth memory. And then as I push that down, Rapid Ascent Alarm. Apparently that's actually probably a little bit soft uh, to be really off use underwater. That's what people tell me who use this watch. And you know, uh, just to show you again, you know, screw down pushes, which are pretty cool, right? That just stops you from operating these buttons underwater, which, uh, you know, they, you advise not to do so. Okay, moving on to this monster of a case here. So this is Oh, interestingly, on the website, they say it's a 53 millimeter case because, you know, it's not really. Uh, I think it would be an in interest not to say it's 53, but look, between my thumb and forefinger here, right, if you measure this round case, it's actually a 49.5 millimeter case. If you measure the bezel itself only, which is actually slightly smaller uh, diameter than the case, it's actually a 46 millimeter bezel. Uh, if you measure the widest part from there to there, then yes, it is close to 53. It is actually 52.5 millimeters, right? Between these two points of the case here. In terms of thickness, right, it is of course a chunker. Uh, now, now to the lower part of the bezel from the bottom of the case is 16.6 millimeters in terms of the thickness there. Uh, the lug width, I don't know whether there's any real meaning, but if you measure the top width of the rubber strap where it contacts the case, it says 27 millimeters. That's what it stipulates on the website and that's what that dimension is. Uh, lug to lug distance, I think not really meaningful. I'm just gonna say it's a round case. So if you wanna consider the a case height, it would be around the 49 millimeter mark there, same as the you know, full case diameter. Overall weight, despite being on a rubber strap, this is a monster of a watch. It is 177 grams and just to, Give you an idea that is heavier than my Omega Seamaster 300M on steel bracelet. It is actually a chunker of a watch, even on rubber. Uh, now, moving on to finishing uh, this bezel. All right, I'm not sure what it is. I think it is plastic. They don't actually say, but it's got these kind of steel highlight bits. Of, of course, it's got that you know white printing for the numbers, and then that highlight there with the you know the loom pip there. Uh, so I'm going to say, I think it's plastic, 
let me know if you know better whether it's another material here. Uh, in terms of finishing on the case itself, you know, horizontal brushing, you know, you can see the depth meter there on the top of the case. And then it transitions to this industrial, you know, heavy duty finish there, uh, which is kind of matte, right? And definitely the bottom of the case, uh, right? And the case back is all matte finishing that we're seeing here. Other elements that you can observe, you know, that is a water sensor. So if you submerge the watch that gets wet, it starts doing the depth metering. And then of course that massive thing there uh, is the depth sensor there, you know, you know, huge, massive look at me type of uh, finishing, which I, I love. I love how they've done this so over the top. Uh, the case back, of course, is screw down, right? Screw down solid case back. I'll let you kind of see the details there, which actually is actually quite hard to read, right? In many lighting conditions, it's actually very hard to read this matte finishing, matte printing on this uh, case back here. Screw down case back, right? Screw down pushes, and of course, a screw down, very solid null crown with that Citizen Pro Master uh, logo on the top here. It is a full diver's 200 meter watch. In fact, you can see the you know, the dial that says Divers 200 meter and in any respectable brand, when you say that, it is ISO 6425 compliant. For those guys who are a little bit new to the world of watches, that is the Divers uh, ISO rating. They can look it up in terms of all the testing you have to meet to put that rating on your watch. Moving on to dial now, okay. So this is an eco drive dial, right? So there is a solar uh, power photovoltaic, uh, you know, panel on this dial here. It is an eco drive black dial, printed elements all over. So you got that inner depth scale, right? Goes from ten uh, at the roughly five o'clock position, all the way up to seventy meters maximum depth rating at about the two o'clock position on here. Uh, it's got a printed chaptering on the flange. And in terms of this hands, it's got a partially skeletonized main hands. I'm going to call this phallic main hands because that's what it looks like to me. Let me know if you know a better word to call these main hands. It's got a rectangle pip for the seconds hand and it's got simple arrows for the depth indicator hands here. Splashes of color, of course, blue on the uh, depth uh, hands, you know, the word depth there on the four clock position, as well as the uh, power reserve indicator. And then a little bit of orange, you know, in the main hands there, the, the minute and the second hands anyway. So I love those little splashes of color that just make it a little bit more fun looking. Uh, in terms of loom, it's got fantastic, you know, you, you expect nothing less from Citizen, I gotta say, it's fantastic dual color loom here. You've got blue on the depth hands and depth meter, and then kind of the typical green everywhere else. A loom shot right here, of course, for you guys to see how cool this looks in the dark. Okay, moving on then. So uh, around the glass, you have a unidirectional dive style bezel, of course. Let's hear it now. Kind of soft. Okay, so that's 10, so it's 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel. Very, very little, they know, they've done this very well. Very little back play despite the size of the watch and the bezel. I was expecting this to have more back play, but gosh, they have really made this a very nice mechanism here. Uh, on top of the dial is, it's just a flat crystal, right? It's a flat mineral crystal. You know, they say shatter resistant with anti-reflective coating and of course, and a proper diver, uh, a lot of people do say they prefer mineral crystal because it is actually that much more shatter resistant. Right, moving on to the strap then. So nothing too special except to say that this is definitely a very heavy, very, very solid feeling polyurethane strap. This is what this is and a very solid buckle here that has simply got some you know simple brush finishing. Uh, it's actually polished down the bottom, interestingly, which you, you, you won't see when you're wearing it, but just to let you know, it's polished down the bottom, but just simple brushing on the top. Okay, so that's the entire description of the watch. Let's pop on the wrist now for a wrist shot for you guys. And there we have it. The very, very large ProMaster Aqualand 200 meter depth meter, it is you know, in no question, a very large watch. You know, thankfully that is minimalized because it's a round case, but hey, look, I think in any sense of uh, style, this is definitely a watch that is 
very, very large and I would say too large to me. Uh, it is very top heavy because remember 177 grams, mostly on the case, not the rubber. It, it, it's, you feel it, you feel it on one side of the wrist. That's how that rubber strap looks like. And remember it is actually 16.5 millimeters thick as well. So it does stick out from the wrist. So very, you know, definitely a lot of wrist presence there. I forgot to say that this strap, uh, it does taper, right? Of course, right? It's, uh, as we say, 27 millimeters near the case, uh, but it does taper to 20 millimeters uh, near the, you know, the, at the narrower part of the strap right here. And it's got double keepers as well, one which is locked in position. So, you know, it really does keep that very long strap in place for people with average wrists or small wrists like mine. Okay, so guys, that's the entire description of the watch here. What do I think are, you know, the strengths here? Well, look, it's a super solidly made watch, super solid quality construction, nothing less than what you expect from a citizen uh, watch company, right? Industry leading solar technology. I really do think that, and uh, Casio obviously do a lot of uh, uh, solar watches now, but citizen were the pioneers and they do seem to be, you know, still having a little bit of edge. Let me know what you think about that. And then it's packaged in this, of course, very strong looking solid hockey puck case, right? I don't know what, what you call this. I guess you could call it a tuner, but it is, uh, I call it a hockey puck because you can probably hit this around very fairly on an ice hockey uh, field, you know, you know, it does feel that solid. And of course it's got the ISO 6425 divers 200 meter rating on this uh, waterproofing of this watch here. And I think, you know, despite how massive and over top it is i reckon there's a rare example of how over the top silliness can somehow actually be cool right it is actually pretty cool looking uh example uh, on the wrist here and the huge buttons you know huge sensor these things make it look more complicated than it really is you know at first when i look at this i thought you oh, know is this a chronograph is this got some other you know sophisticated function no it really is just a depth meter with a standard three-handed date movement in here. Uh, but thanks to all this, it really is an attractive watch in terms of people looking at it and going, oh, what do you got there? This interesting stuff you got here. And it, it, it starts a conversation. There's so many points you can bring up on this watch, right? You know, the, the divers, the, the solar, the, the size of the watch, the water sensor, the depth meter, so many things you can, you know, just chat to people about, you know, who are maybe a little bit new to the world of watches. Any weaknesses? Well, I would say it's just the obvious stuff. It's the fact that it's over the top design, you know, massive size. That means it will limit it to pretty much heavy duty users, right? Those with, uh, you know, uh, rough work, maybe people who actually work in the water uh, or those with very, very large wrists. You know, I think your wrists would have to be eight inches or more instead of my 17 centimeter wrist to carry this and, and make it look proportional you know it really is too big for me i reckon and it it's also far too thick and top heavy for comfortable use i wore this for a whole day and i have to say it, it really is too one-sided for me it's not something that I, I would probably wear for a lot because it really makes your wrist feel imbalanced so that's my opinion of this uh, and because it's so massive and thick, it's also more difficult to use and definitely not versatile. You know, I, I've, I've worn this with a t-shirt. I've worn this with a polo shirt. I wouldn't wear this with a proper shirt and tie. You know, it really is just, it wouldn't fit under the sleeve anyway with the size that it has. So guys, there you go. My thoughts on this massive watch over the top silliness, but somehow manages to pull it off. Let me know what you think of this citizen is a massive brand no doubt a lot of you will have citizen watches in your collection so let me know what you think uh, in the comments below as always appreciate the thoughts from my viewers guys thank you again for sticking with me and i'll catch you next time <music>